<laughs> some things like this. Okay, we had also this session, I think the last time it was in, uh, in September, and we have already a recording of this session uh, from September on the accelerator. Uh, but here, maybe we will add some additions there and we'll let you know if it is needed to, to record it again or, or the recording will be enough. But anyway, also it's recommended that you take notes with me that will be also interesting. So mm -hmm. let's start first with, of course, hello. Hello, we knew from last session, it is Salamu Alaikum, so you already know this. Salamu Alaikum or Ahlan wa Sahlan, the one that we already uh, said many times. And uh, we have already uh, uh, discussed Salamu Alaikum, which is, can anybody remember what is the meaning of Salamu Alaikum literally? Uh, peace to you. Peace to you, exactly. Peace is to it you. peace to you? Peace yes. upon yes. you or peace to you. It's the same thing. So peace, salam, of course, and salam, it is a very, a very uh, interesting word. And it has also uh, the meaning, it, it means peace in Arabic. And you will find also the meaning of salam in other languages that are of the same family. Like, for example, uh, in, in Hebrew, uh, salam is shalom, for example. So it is very mm. similar uh, and it has the same uh, root. And all these Semitic language, they share a lot, and they, they share the same structure and so on. They will you will find the the words very similar to each other in terms of the uh, structure. So salamu alaikum or assalamu alaikum. This is in modern standard Arabic. It means peace be upon you or peace on you. Alaikum. It is a, it is a combination of ala, which is on. Ala, this is the uh, here. If we uh, write it here like this, it is a combination of ala plus kum mm -hmm. alaykum or alaykum the alay mm -hmm. or alaykum in most Arabic. Ala here it means simply on. Ana, ala. So when I say, for example, I have uh, this glass on the table. Okay. The glass on the table, so it will be on the Okay, in Egyptian, it will be on the Or in modern standard Arabic, it will be on the Or it will be on the in modern standard Arabic. But in Egyptian, it will be on the The glass is on the table. So, ala is on. And kum, this is simply a pronoun. It means you, but in the, in the objective way. So, on you. You, this is kum. This is a pronoun you, but as an object, objective, you come as an objective. So it is, and also for uh, plural, so it becomes kum. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. So on you. So this means assalamu alaikum. In Egyptian, usually, sometimes we say it assalamu alaikum. You may hear it from Egyptians in the, the proper modern standard Arabic way, which is assalamu alaikum. This is the proper way. Of saying it in modern standard Arabic. It's actually a modern standard Arabic word. But sometimes Egyptians put their touch and they just say it in the dialect way. Salamu alaikum. Salamu alaikum. They remove the alif lam, the l, and they just say instead of alaikum, alaikum. So they remove this m at the end. So they alaikum. So if you hear it, salamu alaikum, if you hear it as salamu alaikum, both are common in Egypt, and both are used. Good. Also, we have, of course, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan wa Sahlan. Hello. How are you? Ahlan, Ahlan is, um, uh, and Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan from family, Ahl. So you are like a family, Ahlan. Wa Sahlan, Sahl, it means easy in Arabic. So Sahl, Saab, easy and difficult. And when you mm. say sahlan, it means that you are easy on us. You are like very familiar, easy to handle, easy to, to, to talk with. Okay. Um, so ahlan wa sahlan. And sometimes the Arabic uh, or the modern sound Arabic proverb or saying uh, that we that came, we, we have uh, ahlan wa sahlan derived from this saying. They say in modern sound Arabic, halalta ahlan wa nazalta sahlan. Halalta ahlan. So you came to us. 
as a family حللت اهلا this is totally more than stud arabic and نزلت اهلا so you came also to us or you just uh, نزلت is to came down but it here means visit you visited us and you are easy and you are welcomed okay حللت اهلا ونزلت سهلا this is a, the arabic sentence from where we just use اهلا وسهلا so instead of حللت ونزلت we remove this but اهلا وسهلا easy and family or family and easy this is the meaning of اهلا وسهلا just to know when you say when you hear people say اهلا وسهلا what does it mean actually and sometimes actually we say اهلا we don't say وسهلا so you may also hear it اهلا so اهلا زيك عامل ايه اهلا how are you how are you doing okay so اهلا and uh, you you may hear it اهلا alone You may hear أهلاً وسهلاً as a complete phrase. So there are many variations. But أهلاً وسهلاً وسلام عليكم they are the most common ones. And also sometimes Egyptians say other variations. You may see here, for example, مرحب or مرحبيك. مرحب from مرحبا, مرحباً. And مرحباً, of course, you hear that many times in Arabic texts. And in all these texts, uh, teaching Arabic and many modern Sand Arabic uh, uh, classes, they usually have this lesson, marhaban. Okay, but marhaban is actually a very modern Sand Arabic word that can fit for all Arabic language learners. So all of our, all Arabic learners will hear know marhaban and use marhaban, marhab. Okay, and sometimes Egyptians also say marhab, ya marhab, and they they add ya. Yeah. يا مرحبا بك or like hello okay so مرحبا is less common to say okay is it more Turkey and Middle East right uh, مرحبا yeah, not more Turkey but it's more modern standard Arabic I would ah, say okay. yeah it's more 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 official modern standard Arabic so you say مرحبا to somebody if you don't know for example his dialect And just say marhaban, and he will understand as Arab marhaban. This is from modern standard Arabic. And then they will also say marhaban. Mm -hmm. uh, it's understood for all dialects. But usually, when it comes to talking on the street between Egyptians, or even talking to other uh, nationalities uh, or other Arabs on the street, marhaban is very uh, official, okay, very modern standard Arabic. Okay, very grammatical. Is it also more formal? More formal, of oh, course. Okay. Yeah, you can use it, for example, marhaban, when you also in a formal interview or something, marhaban. Okay, but usually also, in if we say salamu alaykum, is formal also in Egyptian. When you say ahlan wa sahlan, is, uh, is formal. But for example, the, the more the, the, the more informal ones, instead of saying ahlan wa sahlan, for example, some Egyptians say, Ya ahlan, ya ahlan, ya ahlan bik, ya marhab. All this when you say ya marhab, ya ahlan, this is to, no more formal. Okay. okay, no, when you summon somebody, oh, hello, and I say ya marhab, ya ahlan, so it's not, you, usually you don't say to your interviewer, for example, for a job, ya marhab. <laughs> Or ya ahla, no. Uh, it, 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 this should be, of course, uh, into put into consideration because it's between people who are very close to each other. Ya marhab, ya ahlan, marhab bik, ahlan bik, and so on. But, salamu alaikum, ahlan, ahlan bik, without ya, ahlan bik, marhaban. All these are more formal and you can use it safely in formal situation. Okay? So, This is for the greetings. Let's now move to what's your name? What's your name? What's your name usually in modern Arabic is ma ismuka or ma ismuki. Mm. This is the modern standard Arabic version. But in we don't say ma in uh, in in Egyptian in this context. Some some we say ma when we negate. So when um, when I say for example هو ما يعرفش عربي هو ما بيعرفش عربي he doesn't know Arabic okay يعرف here is to know I negate to know and I say ما يعرف and then add ش at the end ما يعرف شيء a thing شيء 
Shay'in, what is Arabic? It means a thing. Shay'an or shay. And we took shay from modern standard Arabic, which is a thing, and we add it as she at the end of the uh, of the verb, for example, to uh, indicate the negation. So instead of in modern standard Arabic, huwa ma ya'rifu shay'an, he doesn't know anything, shay'an or thing, we just combine it together in the dialect and say huwa ma ya'rafshi. Huwa ma ya'rafshi. <laughs> This is <laughs> how my Arafshi came from. So when you hear this she, she at the end, it means mm. hey, in modern standard Arabic. So this is how we combine modern standard Arabic and Egyptian. And you know why she, she in Egyptian, where it came from. Okay. Hey. But, yeah. And not only Egyptian, actually, in Levantine, also in uh, the dialects, for example, in Lebanon. Uh, when in the Lebanon they say mafishi, 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 she. They say she. It is she actually. Okay, so this just to know that the derivation came from the modern standard Arabic, but the dialect usually people put their own, uh, let's say, uh, touch or their own dialect to it and change it a little bit. Perfect. So now we know uh, she. So, what's your name? Ma ismuk. We don't say ma ismuk. We say ismak a, a. So ismak a here. Sin mim kaf a, and of course this is for male, and this is for female. Claudia, instead of ismak a, ismak e. Exactly, ismik a. So a is the same, but just we say ismik. Yeah, so Ismak here. Ismak A. Let me also make it a bit bigger. So Ismak A here. This is for male to male. And here Ismik A. So instead of this, we say Ismik like this. And the same here. And this is for two female. So ismak uh, the, the the female relates uh, relates to the person you're talking to, not you're talking to. You're... Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. talking to to a male, to a female. So when I say, mm. for example, uh, I ask you, Barbara, about your name, I say ismik a. But if a male student I'm talking to, I will tell him ismak or I will ask him ismak a. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is very important, especially for foreigners, because if you are in Egypt. Yeah. Some, sometime you hear some foreigners they talk and they switch these uh, pronouns so, yeah. or, or, or sometimes they use ismic all the time yeah. the, the one for female and this is very common in Egypt and we are used to hear it in Egypt over and over and over again you know that also mm. in Egypt it has been at some time in Egypt where some Egyptian uh, towns were cosmopolitan. That's no more the case, uh, uh, unfortunately. But at some point in time in the 20th century, uh, until 1950s, uh, in Alexandria and in Cairo, but Alexandria more as a port and as a, a city on the Mediterranean, it was a cosmopolitan city. This means that there were many, many uh, foreigners living in Alexandria, especially at the time of the World War II, because many people used to go out from Europe and leave Europe uh, and leave the war and try to go to a more peaceful place where they can find jobs and so on. And Alexandria at this time, it was on the Mediterranean, very, very, uh, uh, let's say near to Italy, very near to Greece, um, and very near to many European countries actually because of the sea for the Mediterranean, and they used to go there to Alexandria and work there many jobs. So the, let's say the Egyptian, the community in Alexandria consisted of many, many nationalities. And you hear, if you have a, a series in Egypt, for example, um, uh, that takes this period into account and a historical series, you will hear by yourself, many foreigners in Egypt, they say, Isaiq. Is Zayik Amle and they're talking to a male? 
ازيك this is actually in Egyptian to a female ازيك عاملة ايه to a female but ازيك عامل ايه to a male but you hear many uh, or uh, اسمك ايه اسمك ايه so you hear many foreigners say the female uh, version all the time and Egyptian use oh. to hear it a lot and they it's totally okay they understand it and they respond uh, totally انا اسمي or انا كويس or انا I, I am okay and so on so here properly اسمك ايه for male and اسمك ايه for female and when you say my name you say اسمي so you here know that اسم mm -hmm. it is the noun اسم so اسم noun it is the noun of na for name اسم اسم uh, name in English اسم in Arabic and uh, and also in Egyptian and you you add the pronouns so اسمك your name okay اسمك your name but to a female اسمكم remember اسمكم عليكم عليكم السلام the same thing اسمكم or sometimes Egyptians say instead of اسمكم اسمكو like عليكو السلام or السلام عليكو okay اسمكو instead of اسمكم this is also uh, common in Egyptian so اسمك ايه اسمك ايه اسمو ايه هو هي اسمو ايه his name اسمها ايه اسمكم you a اسمنه we a okay so اسم comes and the pronoun is as a suffix so it is um, uh, the, the pronoun is not uh, separate it's connected to the to the uh, same noun at the end اسمك اسمك اسمكو اسمها اسمه and so on اسمي my name اسمي my okay so اسمك ايه انا اسمي حميد for example اسمك ايه انا اسمي باربرا okay اسمك ايه انا اسمي كلاوديا so this is how we say أنا اسمي أنا uh, and اسمك إيه. You know حضرتك and you know حضرتك you heard it before. Yeah. Do you hear حضرتك حضرتك before Claudia? I heard it before, yeah. Before حضرتك حضرتك and حضرتك and حضرتك are these are the is it uh, the, the polite form to elderly with hey. which is more respectful? Yes, like Z in German. Exactly. It's like Z in German. And this is one of the similarities, okay, between Arabic and German that we have, for example, Z, or we have, for example, Hadretak or Hadretik to indicate the formal case. Okay. So when I talk to somebody who is of respect, so for example, I'm talking to my teacher or I'm talking to somebody on a formal basis an interview unless the, you are already familiar with each other and you spend some time and he is or she is agreeing that you talk casually but at the beginning you address formally and he or she addresses you also formally uh, if you are talking to somebody who is more respect uh, elderly for example or somebody Sometimes somebody on, in authority, uh, you are, for example, uh, uh, going to have a service and this service for somebody will in an office and will do some service to you. You don't address him casually. Uh, you don't say enta or enti. You say hadretak or hadretik. Hadretak or hadretik. This is also very important when you talk in Egyptian, you say it formally at the beginning but usually uh, uh, it is used all the time in the formal situation and in the respectful way uh, or in a, a, a situation that requires some respect in talking here what we say instead of adding the pronoun to the ism remember when we said ism ismak or ismik Remember, what is this? It's simply the noun, ism, with the pronoun attached to it at the end. Ismak, ismik, ismo, and so on. Here we make a slight variation. We attach the pronoun to hadrit instead of hadrit, uh, instead of ism. Okay, so we here 
say, for example, let me also add this one here. Hadrit. Hadrit. From 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 it came Hadritak, of course, um, and so on. But we have here uh, we we attach Hadrit or uh, and we attach the pronoun to this noun specifically. So when we say Hadrit, we can add, for example, tek you, for example, tick this you, this is male. And you here, female. And uh, for example, Hadreto, uh, him, Hadretha, for example, here, and so on. So here it becomes for here like Hadretak. But take note here that see when you attach the pronoun what we did. Can you see the difference between this one and this one? Yeah, the ending. Yes. So the the ending is feminine here, and on the other side, it's it's this big um, elef. Yeah, the te. The te. Exactly. The te. What we did here is that usually hadra or hadrit. This is end end ending with tai te, but. When we add the pronoun, usually the tie ta doesn't have any letter or it's not allowed to attach any letter to the tie ta after the tie ta, any letter after the tie ta. So the tie ta is very special letter where it all it actually used to indicate the feminine form and mm. it shouldn't be attached uh, afterwards with a letter. So the tie ta. There's no letter comes after the ta at all. This is like a rule in Arabic. So when we um, put a pronoun or another letter after the ta, ta we switch this ta, ta into normal ta. Uh -huh. Okay, hadretak. Mm -hmm. So here hadret with ta, ta it becomes a hadret ta. And then hadretak, it becomes here uh, with the ta. The same. Remember, when we say mudarrisa or doctora, remember this when we talked about it one time. Uh, I think maybe for Barbara, this is the first time. When we say mudarrisa, which is a female teacher or doctora, mm. a female doctor, doctora, mudarrisa, okay, muhandisa. Mm. Usually here we stop with a eh and the end is tight ta. so but when we add when we add a a, 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 a word of a word after mudarrisa indicative word to mudarrisa usually the l, 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 the the indication will have the ta instead of tight ta as a pronunciation so we say for example heya mudarrisa she is a teacher but when we say she is an english teacher we say هي مدرسة إنجليزي. We don't say هي مدرسة إنجليزي. No, هي مدرسة إنجليزي. So when we say هي, uh, uh, for example, she is a doctor. هي دكتورة. But if we want to say she is a, 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 a children doctor, for example, or kids specialization doctor, we say instead of دكتورة, she's we we say Barbara. Can you try? Uh, uh, children uh, is atfal, tifl atfal. Uh, uh, he uh, doctor atfal. Doctorit. Ah, doctorit. Yes, doctorit. Ah, because, of the, okay. because of the alien. Yeah, okay. of, exactly. Okay. Because of this taita. So the taita alone, alone, it is pronounced pronounced as ah. So doctora, mudarrisa. Okay. This yeah. is the, the, the okay. pronunciation of the tight ta. But the tight ta, when it has a word afterwards, it's uh, it has a different pronunciation. Mudarris, mudarrisit, okay? Mudarrisit, mm -hmm. and so on. The same thing, when we say my teacher, so it is mudarrisa, right? I add mm. my, it's e. Like, for example, ismi, right? Ismi mm -hmm. Hamid. 
So mudarrisa, when we add e, if we try to pronounce 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 it with e, can you pronounce? How would you? Yes, it will not be mudarrisa he. No. No, it's very difficult. Yeah, it doesn't work. Mudarrisai, mudarrisai, no. So here the tie ta becomes a ta. Mudarrisati, mudarristi, or mudarrisati. Okay, the tie ta here, when it is combined to a word or a pronoun afterwards, it completely transfers to ta. Mudarristi, mudarrisati, doctorti. Okay, doctor T, doctoretha, doctor to, not doctor who. Not doctor who, okay, doctor to. Okay, so the title becomes a ta. Good. So here, when, yes. Uh, you, you have a question? Ah, oh, no, okay, no. So here, the title is a, a, it becomes or transferred to a ta. Okay, so when I say, for example, uh, uh, I ask Barbara, okay, ismic. اسم حضرتك ايه؟ So here I'm talking the formal one. اسم حضرتك ايه؟ Then you reply, you say. انا اسمي باربرا. انا اسمي باربرا, exactly. So you reply and say انا اسمي. And then you add the name انا اسمي باربرا, انا اسمي حميد. Or sometimes Egyptians even or natives they don't add ana. No. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because ismi here is a derivation for I. So this E at the end is a direct derivation or, or it is a, actually the conjugation of with I. Ismi. Ismi. So if you say ana ismi, it is a repetition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you may hear Egyptians say ana ismi. But if they just say ismi without ana, this is completely fine. And this is also native speaking. Ismi Hamid. Ismi Hamid. Or ana ismi Hamid. Okay. Both are understood. Both are understood. 